Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of Switch's Path to 100 Million, which I'll explain a little bit later in this video. Uh, right now it's about 6.30 in Vancouver, down at the Southlands Riding Club. It's where we uh, store our Airstream. And I'm off to Pender. So if you haven't seen episode one, just go to YouTube and uh, search Switch, and you might want a little bit of context, but uh, today we're going to Pender, and I'm bringing you along for the ride. Hey there, it's Joe. Uh, beautiful day here in Vancouver. I'm at the Tawasin or Sawasin Ferry Terminals, and I am heading over to Pender with our first batch of personal belongings. I have a little cargo trailer. Uh, we've been storing our stuff for a couple of months, waiting for the uh, property to close. And so this is my first trip over there. I've been meeting a couple of contractors. Uh, we have uh, kind of a weird power and water setup, so I'm just gonna try to get that all figured out and move some of our stuff in, and then um, we'll take the Airstream over in a couple of weeks. For Galliano, Maine, Bender, and Salisbury Islands, please return to your vehicles in preparation for boarding. Hey there, so really windy, so forgive the hair. Uh, but we're heading into Sturdy's Bay. Apparently there's some whales out here, some uh, orca whales, and I'm trying to get a shot for you. First time in the property since we owned it. All right. So I'll take you for a little tour right now. I don't know if you can hear that. It's just so quiet here. Listen. Amazing. All right. Here's the entrance way. It's a little uh, workshop. And here's the cabin. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get in here. Let's see. Here we go. This is the kitchen area. Living area. It's just all sloped down to the corner. The master bedroom. Back over here. This is the bathroom. 
another little room here. Okay, let's go check out the yard. Yeah, for years I've wanted to have my own farm. Uh, this will be an interesting experience because we're still working, building Switch and Ruby. Uh, but there is something about being in a space that inspires you that is just so magical. I mean, I cannot believe this property. Other than nature, there's no sounds. It's quiet. I don't hear cars. There's just so much life here. Anyways, I'm excited. I'm spending a few days here. I'm just going to sleep under the stars tonight. Maybe you should do when I was a kid. So I only bought a sleeping bag and um, can't sleep in the cabin. Needs a lot of work. Uh, but it's going to be fun. So it's a really beautiful night. So I'm going to start unpacking and uh, get cracking on this beautiful place. Okay, so it's getting, it's starting to get dark. So I, I've unpacked and I got a few things uh, set up for tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm sleeping outside, I'm gonna show you in a minute. And I've set up an outdoor shower, which is amazing. I'll show you that as well. Anyway, I'll just give you a quick walk around. So one priority is I got some boxes to burn, but I set up a little fire. They're gonna have a little outdoor campfire, because who doesn't like campfires? And this is my outdoor shower. Uh, I have cold showers in the morning, so usually around 4 a.m. So this is what's set up for 4 a.m. tomorrow. Nice, uh, nice shower. What do you call it, a rain shower head. So I'll be doing that, start my day in the morning. A little meditation. Here's my bed, my sleeping bag. I got a little lamp, a book. Pretty beautiful night here. Looking forward to sleeping under the stars. morning. I wanted to talk a bit about our path to 100 million. Some people have been asking, uh, asking, first of all, how do we offer Switch for free? And uh, how are we going to get to 100 million? So I'll answer the second question first, because we don't know how we're going to get to 100 million. That's what we want to do. We want to help 100 million people. Um, it's always been our goal when we started our first business, Don and I, um, which is a film catering business to contribute back to the world in some way. We actually had a we had a experience where we were catering to cast and crew in a downtown Vancouver lower income area, and we rolled in at two in the morning, and the security were displacing all these homeless people, saying "Go home, go home," and these people were just living in their homes, and they were being kicked out, and then we ended up uh, feeding cast and crew this you know, amazing food and then right behind the catering truck were all these people that had no food. So we decided right then and there we were gonna sell that catering company and build a company that contributed back to the world. And we searched and thought of a whole bunch of different ideas and, and then we realized as chefs that people weren't, they didn't have the skills to cook. 
and we went to culinary school where we learned lots of birds here um, we learned how to you know basic cooking fundamentals how to you know heat a pan and use a knife and a, uh, apply heat and develop flavor and simple things that all, everybody could learn that we had learned and we thought let's capture that let's help the world eat better to improve their lives so we set out to build Ruby and now with switch uh, you know, how are we going to get to 100 million people? We don't know. We're going to figure it out. So we just laid out a path to get there and um, we'll figure it out as we go along. I think the first thing is, um, in any goal, is just to define it. You know, what your vision is, where you want to go and where you want to take it. And then the universe will guide you there as long as you have this burning desire to, to get there. Uh, how are we going to offer it for free? Well, we have shot all this amazing content for ProCook training. We're in 3,500 hotels around the world. We've trained 600,000 people. They pay us for courses and certification. That's how we make our money. Now we have all this amazing content that with the advent of the internet and faster broadband connections, uh, it's very inexpensive for us to deliver. So we'll probably have some premium tier down the road, but we'll figure that out for now. Ruby's funding. The development and launch of switch so it's a great opportunity for you to take advantage of basic cooking education there's no excuse you know we've we spent millions of dollars capturing this amazing content and it's yours for the taking if you're motivated to improve your health through cooking and uh, in particular plant-based foods uh, we were not plant-based when we started this company we were um, uh, French trained chefs. We ate a lot of animal products. Uh, we, in the course of developing our plant based course, we learned way too much to ever go back, and so we're now 100% plant based. And um, we're not asking you to be plant based. We're asking if you're motivated to incorporate more plant based foods into your life, then this is a great tool to try that. Even if it's one day a week, one meal a day, doesn't matter. Uh, it's not a gimmick, it's for real. And I hope you get a chance to check it out. And please do share it with your friends and family, anybody that wants to become a better cook. Since I started recording these videos, my mom has said I need a haircut. So uh, tell me what you think in the, in the comments below. Uh, I know Don's been my hairdresser for 15 years. Originally, when we started Ruby, I couldn't afford to go out and get a haircut. So Don started cutting my hair and she decided, hey, I want you to grow out your hair. So I'm not gonna cut it anymore. So I've lost my hairdresser. And, um, but my mom's saying that I need to get a haircut. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen. I, th I think it's more appropriate for farm life, don't you think? The beard and, anyways, just wanted to throw that out there. So now I'm down into kind of the meadow area. It's like this two acre strip of beautiful, green area. We're going to put up, um, I'll turn around here. Sorry, I got to shut something off my screen. There. So over, over here, uh, you can see it. There's a little sort of nice patch right up against the trees. I'm going to put a, our first glamping tent there. We have a, we have a um, 20 foot in diameter, um, tent from Canvas Camp, um, and it's I think six, maybe 12 feet high in the middle. Um, we bought a, a king bed for it, and a little uh, wood stove that will go inside with a chimney that goes through the tent. And that's going to be where our, our guests stay. I'm going to sleep in there. I love sleeping in tents once in a while. And then walk down a little bit further. I'm just walking toward the, the cabin right now. And um, we have this section right now, which was used by the former owner of the property as a, a wood mill. They had a bandsaw outdoor wood mill. So they would actually d drop trees. You can see some trees here. Um, or they, in most cases, would just use trees that have fallen or that were dead and then they would mill them into the logs that they used to build the structure, for example, and a lot of things on their property. 
So you can put, I think, 16 foot log in there and you can cut two by fours and four by fours and planks and decking and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do something a little different though. We actually are gonna turn this structure into a um, power, uh, sort of a power shed and a laundry room and um, proper bathrooms that will be connected to our septic field. And then at the very end there, at the end of the structure where it's green, we're gonna build a beautiful outdoor shower. So when you're showering, you'll just be looking at all of this beautiful forest. Just walking down a little bit further. And we get into this next sort of green area behind me. And right behind me is where we're gonna put the Airstream. So now I'm gonna take you, this will be our view from the Airstream. Take you to our other little place. We're gonna build a, a little pad. I think for a friend who's gonna come and help us work on the farm. And also, uh, he's our yoga instructor and a really good friend. And he's been teaching us a lot about Kundalini yoga and how to breathe properly and meditate. It's really changed our lives. So we're hoping that we can convince him to come over here part-time, full-time, who knows. So I've scoped out a perfect place for him. And um, up in the trees, there's this little trail. It goes up into our forest, you can see all these beautiful trees. lot of trees down and need a fair bit of cleanup. There was a section right in here and it's all when the sun shines through the trees it's all like beautiful moss. Try to get down here. Like it's all like this beautiful carpet. It's like a natural carpet. It's so amazing I camped here yesterday and uh, just sat and laid in it, grounded myself for 20 minutes, listened to the birds. And the sound of nothing, but the life. So we're gonna build a pad here, put another glamping tent. And when he's here, he can stay or any guests and stay and just have a peaceful time. I want to take you to the garden. I'll show you what kind of potential we have. I'm just heading back to the cabin area and a little bridge. We have a, um, that's not a fruit bearing tree, this is an apple tree. Um, this one's just starting to green, which is nice. I just look kind of like dead. You see this, you can buy some, some green things starting. So next time I come here, you can see some more green. And there's a greenhouse. It's all kind of just made with materials that the previous owner found on the property. Sorry, on the island, I think. Old glass and just a real uh, creative greenhouse, but we use it to grow tomatoes. And then here's the entrance to the garden. You can see the fence is down. We have a lot of deer here, so we got to do some fence work. And then you can see the natural this is just you can see water just trickling out of that hose that's the overfill from the well and this is where I rescued a little tree frog yesterday that was um, about to jump in the 
the fire from still had warm coals from the night before and so I scooped them up and put them down there and I call them Kerm and I come here every morning and say hi Kerm hope you have a good day saw him yesterday so I'm hoping he hangs out around here maybe tree frogs shouldn't go in water I don't know what do I know anyway here's the entrance to the garden you can see it's a lot of overgrown her old beds are just covered in tarps and blankets I guess for the winter um, so there's just so much space so much potential to grow food oh yeah and she did this uh, uh, she made this natural fertilizer which I have to learn more about I'll show you here she takes her old grass trimmings and then she brews them she makes some kind of a grass brew you see it's all water down below there I'm not showing you the right spot. And then she strains that water into here. I think there was a third process uh, making her own fertilizer, which I'll have to learn about. And then she uses that to fertilize her her plants instead of using chemicals. So that was brilliant. So all this is naturally organic, once organic garden. So the soil is apparently amazing get the hoop house up and um, improve the water supply situation so we have a um, you know no shortage of water and it goes down a couple of football fields even further but I don't think we need that much because we're not going to be commercially farming just producing our own food and for those that come to our property uh, we've also talked about you know Dawn's dream is to have a yoga retreat we like the community so have like-minded people come by and learn some kundalini yoga with us and cook great food so that'll all happen here one day probably one day soon we can help it but we are busy with switch and ruby so that's our focus for now and this is i don't know what we're going to use this for maybe just keep it natural for the deer the animals We get rid of that tire. See you later. Morning, everybody. I wanted to, um, you know, just update you. We are coming over in a couple of weeks. We still have a few repairs to do the Airstream just to get it ready. Um, I also have to build the pad for where we're going to park the Airstream. So I had a contractor out on the weekend, met a few contractors, actually one person that's going to help us with power. Um, another person that's going to help us with a um, septic line. So we don't really have a washroom here, we have an outhouse. Um, we do have a pretty good water source, which is great. I checked out the um, recycling depot, the farmer's market, the hardware store, you know, all the essentials. Got some of our tools out, cut some wood, which I haven't done in years. Um, got the chainsaw going to, to clear a, a, a tree that had fallen on a structure. And cut the grass and, I don't know, just kind of settled in. Um, started to plan out some of the things that we're going to do. I did a couple sketches of the the whole farm. Just got a sketch pad out. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, Don and I, this is the first time we've ever, ever had a farm. Uh, we do plan to have animals, um, kind of like a farm sanctuary thing, as well as growing our own food. And of course, sharing that experience with you, cooking on our Airstream. So if you have ever had the excuse that I don't have a very good kitchen or a very big kitchen, I don't have a lot of equipment, uh, you, you will no longer have that excuse because we don't have very much uh, space either. So we're going to be using minimal equipment, cooking really simply, sharing that with you, trying to inspire you to just try some really delicious, simple things. This is a great time to buy local, fresh uh, produce from farmer's markets or local farms. 
Eat organically if you can afford it. Um, there's just no chemicals, no pesticides, so it's way better for your body. Uh, so we're going to be doing that here. We got to hire a local uh, organic gardener to help us because we're we're too busy with Switch and Ruby um, to spend a lot of time with this much space and so many things to do. It's going to be impossible for us to do it all. So we're going to need help. We got a tractor coming over here in um, another week, and we're going to—I guess they call it tilling. <laughs> Never done a tractor before, but we have a tiller, so we're going to till it, the land, and then we're going to build some some uh, vegetable um, containers. See, I don't even know the language, <laughs> but uh, we're going to learn it all. So there's no excuse. Uh, you know, we believe uh, we've always wanted to have a farm. We've talked about it for years. For some reason, we bought condos in Vancouver, and we kept upgrading to different places, trying to find our home. But in our hearts, at least in my heart. I always wanted to have a farm, so sorry, we're, we're here. And I just want you to know that if you put your mind, put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. So, and even now that we're here, we're not builders, but we now bought tools, and we're going to learn how to start building our own structures from the timber and, and logs that we that we fell on the prop. I think it's called felling uh, that we fell on the property. Um, we're gonna we're gonna cut that we have a wood mill coming and we're gonna we're gonna make our own two by fours and four by fours and we're gonna build our own fencing um, with a lot of help and we're gonna grow a ton of food and we're gonna pull it out of the ground and we're gonna prepare it and we're gonna show you how to eat really 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 well so thanks for coming along for the ride and um, I'll, I'll tune back in or check back in with you next week we'll bring the tractor over here and have a little fun with that. And then in a, a week after that, we'll bring the Airstream over and stay connected. So hope you're having a great day. And uh, until we talk again, uh, make it a great day. <laughs>